Hey, welcome back to Daily Hope. I want to talk to you today about the most evil people on your radar. The most anti-God, the most hateful people that you can think of. And I want to give you our verse first, and then I'm going to tell you how it connects with our theme of nations and revival. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul the Apostle is describing the composition, the makeup of the people in the early church in the city of Corinth. And these were rough and tumble people. In fact, if we pick up in verse 10, Paul's saying that in the kingdom of God, certain people, if their lifestyle is defined by, a, by certain sins and they don't come to Jesus, they won't be in the kingdom of God. He says, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. So if a person's entire way of life, this isn't saying a person once sinned or occasionally falls into sin of greed or being drunk or slandering or swindling, but if a person's, their, their whole way of life is defined by sin and they never turn to Jesus for forgiveness, then they're not going to be in the kingdom of God. And as we know, Romans 3, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we all need to turn to God. But the point is, Paul describes these groups, and there's others described earlier in the chapter, but I love the next sentence. Paul says, and that is what some of you were. A healthy church is made up of the most sinful people you can imagine who found Jesus. That's a part of a healthy church. But then Paul says, and I love this, but you were washed when you trusted in Jesus and you were sanctified. That means set apart. So we're supposed to live a different lifestyle after we trust in Jesus. And you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. There's so much here. That word justified means just as if I'd never sinned. So the moment you placed your faith in Jesus, when God the Father looks at you now, he sees you just as if you had never sinned. And by the power of the Spirit of God in you, you now have the power to say no to sin. I don't think this verse means that you'll never ever sin again. I I still sin on occasion and you'll still sin most likely on occasion. Um, We shouldn't take sin lightly, but when we sin, 1 John 1 says... Well, if you don't think you're sinning, you're lying to yourself. But when you do sin, confess it to God, and he's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you. That's 1 John 1, 8 and 9. Now, my point is this. When you think of those most evil people in the world today who frustrate you or grieve you, they're the very people who God wants to transform. He wants to set them free from sin. We're going to pick up on this tomorrow because this was a key verse during the first great awakening back in the 1730s and 40s. I want to read it to you again tomorrow. I'll see you then.